Justin, we're a few days into CFL week. Um, it's been interesting. We've been to some of the fan events down at the Fan Fest and uh, talked to some uh, some rider fans and some other fans. Rabid rider fans. Well, oh boy. Are, are there any other kind of than <laughs> rabid rider fans? Might not be. No. Uh, it's it's been good. It, different than a Grey Cup, I think. Um, less uh, there's around Grey Cup. There's always that anticipation for the game that's coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think you can sort of feel that in, in the environment. And obviously, there's a lot of history, and there's people from all over the country there. This is, has a different feel to it without that same intensity. Still, uh, I think overall getting pretty uh, solid reviews from, from players and coaches and, and fans we've talked to, um, but certainly a, a different feel than, than a Grey Cup. Certainly, but when you don't have the game, you can't really replicate that. So I think from the events that we've been to so far that were pretty well attended from a fan perspective. It was pretty busy in the fan cave where we're at. We saw little Henry Burris run out of the tunnel. He could throw some footballs around. You could get your picture taken with the Grey Cup. There was tons of stuff, player interaction, autographs, panels, lots of stuff for young kids and families to do, which I think was really successful. Well, and I think the, the part with the players, which is interesting, is that there isn't a ton of player access at Grey Cup because obviously not all the teams are there and not all the representatives are there. It's just the primarily the players are only from uh, the two teams and their access is very restricted, clearly, because they're in preparation for the game. This time around, all the players that were here, I think, have been made available to the fans in some context or another, which is, which is pretty cool. Uh, the next thing that comes up is the combine, which starts tomorrow. Uh, Justin, what, what's your sense of where this combine's at? It's in terms of a class, maybe not the deepest class, and we've seen the last couple of years some some really good classes. Some Canadians have been drafted in the NFL, which actually obviously affects their CFL stock. But there's some talented guys at the top end, and talking to some scouts around the league, that's who they're most interested to see. As am I. Obviously, you want to see the top guys compete, but there's always a couple guys that seem to come to the Combine who are under the radar. We wrote about one of them on Three Down Nation and Jeremy Zver, an offensive tackle from the University of Regina, that pop and rise up the board. He's one guy to keep an eye on, certainly. And there are going to be a couple more that are going to come, come out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, I think that's... We talked a little bit about it on our podcast, right? About how an excellent combine performance, particularly in the individual events or, or the individual measurements, can, can change a guy's draft stock, uh, as can a good performance in the one-on-one. So there is always one or two guys that seems to emerge from these combines that the, the conversation around them changes. Drew, you sound like a scout. I do? <laughs> that's your job. 